let's look at data transformation and we'll just look at the date and time node. So we've got a few different options here, add to a date, extract part of a date, format a date, get the current date, get time between dates, round a date, and then subtract from a date. So let's start with just getting the current date. So we'll add that node and execute it straight away. And this will get it at the moment because we're passing it three objects. It's gonna get it for us three times. So we don't need to do that. Let's just add a limit node in here. So it'll limit it to one. Now we'll jump back into the data, to the date and time node, and now it's just one because we're just getting one item through. And by default, it's going to say include the current time. If we turn that off, we'll just get the date and it just zeroes out the, the time here. It also has the time zone that your server is set to or your workflow. If you specify it in the settings in your workflow, you might change it here. So mine by default at the moment is set to American New York. And so this one's getting the current date. We want to include the time. So it's going to give me this timestamp here. So that's the time in New York on the 26th. It is 8.43 p.m. 10 seconds. Okay, and it's called current date. We can name that to whatever we want. It's just going to be the prefix here. And for add options, we've just got including input fields if we want to, which gives us all of the data that we have in the previous uh, node. And then we've got the time zone, so you can explicitly set it here as well, so that you don't have to take into account the server or the workflow setting, and you can explicitly set it. I'm going to turn both of those off for now, so we just want to work with the date. So we've got that one. I'll jump back out of here, and we'll add another node. I'll just so you can either write, either click on it here and choose duplicate, or you can choose Control D, or you can do Control Copy, Control Paste as well. So let's just rename this one. Get current date so we know what it is and this one let's add to a date first of all so the date we're going to add to is this current date and time unit to add so we've got a few different options we've got years quarters uh then months weeks days hours minutes seconds it's quite unusual to have quarters there as an option so it's quite nice if you're working in, in quarters and you don't have to calculate it and so let's just use days for example and at the moment it's zero so it's going to be exactly the same on both sides. And I'm going to add five days to it. And so now you can see it is the 1st of July. Let's make it four, so it's easier. So we've got six, so we've got the 30th of, of June, four days from now. And the new, it's also changing the output field name here. So we've got current date, which we've used, and we've got new date. And you might want that for later on in the flow. If you're having to use the current date, you'll refer to the node, but you also might want to keep the, the naming different there. But you don't have to. You could also just also call this current date if you want, but you might want to be more prescriptive and say date plus four days if that's exactly what you're doing. So now we know. And for adding options, we just get the standard kind of include option. So this will give us both the current date and the newly added date. So that's adding to a date. It's pretty straightforward. And you can also do minus here. So if we just say minus four days, it will take four days away. You can see that. Let's just turn that one off again. We can see it's now the 22nd of June. And this one's the 26th of June. And it keeps the time. So if you've got the time coming through there, the time is exactly the same because it's just looking in this instance, just looking at days. And we could do the units, we could say take away four years, we could say that it's just that one that is going to change. So in one of them, we can only choose one time unit to add or subtract. So even though this obviously this says add here, as long as you add the, the minus before it, it'll subtract it. But we can only do one of them. So if you need to subtract or add years and months and days, then you'll have to have a duplicate. Uh, of this node and you know, add it incrementally. And then we've got extract part of a date. So let's current date in here. Let's just execute it with the default. So it's got date, let's not call it date plus, let's just say new date. So we are trying to extract the part of the date that we want. So at the moment, the part is the month. So the month is six. And you can see here in the, in the full string, it's all using leading zeros here. So it's the June is 06 and the dates, like the, the first will be 01. But for this particular one, it is stripping off those leading zeros and it's actually giving us a number because this is a string. So we can have those leading zeros in there. But because this is a number, even if it does have leading zeros, it's gonna remove that there. And adding options, again, we only get the including the input fields. 
And so we could choose year, it will give us the year, and we can get everything out of the all of the uh, separate components here. Apart from, we can't get the, uh, the milliseconds here, so that increment, so we can only go down to the seconds. And you also can't pull out the part that is the time zone. So this part at the end here, the UTC string. So you can only do the three parts of the date and the three parts of the time with this particular function. Let's look at formatting a date. So if we execute it straight away, we can see the format is month, day, year. So that's what we get here, month, day, year. Plus it's got leading zeros because we've got the two capital M's here and the two capital D's. And these are just selectable formats. So you can have another one here, year, month, day. It's just going to reverse it around for you. And then if we have four M's like this, we're going to get the full month name, so June. If we have three, we would just get the J-U-N piece of the, so the first three letters. And then we've got spaces here, so spaces there. So we get a few different options. We've got month, day, year with dashes. And we've got year, month, day. This is quite good for using this format of year, month, day for like naming the prefix naming of files so that they sort in the correct order rather than using day, month, year, because then they won't. And then we've got Unix timestamps if you want and Unix microsecond timestamp. So it includes the microseconds there, the 808 we have over here. Uh, then we also have custom format. So this is interesting and it gives you uh, the list of the, there are special tokens. Let's just jump over to this page. So they have a, a few special, quite a, quite a few different sort of special tokens here. So we have capital S, so the case is important here. Capital S, capital S, three of them padded to three spaces. You can see it's got the padding here. U for fractional seconds. We have the lowercase s for the second. You see the difference there, the uppercase is the millisecond, the lowercase is the second. Lowercase m for the minutes. Uh, where is the uppercase m? Uppercase m here for months. There it is. Uh, but we also have l here. <laughs> A little bit confusingly. But so it's important that you've got to use the lowercase m for minute. Lowercase h for hour in a 12 hour time. No padding. Two of them to do padded to two, but still 12 hour time format. Capital H is 24 hours. Z is your uh, offset kind of information. So effectively the time zone there. So and we can go right the way up to five capital Z's to get the full explanation. Four of them get the abbreviation and then the other ones get the actual numbers. We have a single lowercase Z to get the IANA zone, which is in this case, American New York is the example. We have A, which gives you your, your AM or PM. We have the lowercase d, which is the day of the month, no padding. Then double d will give us the padding. We have c, which is the day of the week. Uh, also, you can use the capital E's. And then the other ones will give us the abbreviation or the full name. You also get the letter, which uh, interestingly takes five c's or five e's to get the smallest result. And then same kind of thing with the, the months. So I'm going to format here of the uppercase l or uppercase m. We have the year in lowercase. We can get it unpadded here. We'll get it the, just the two digits at the end if we need it. Uh, or we'll get the four to six digit year, uh, which pads to, to four. Um, and then we've got G, which is localized uh, era. Uh, almost, I can't remember a single time I've ever used that. And then we get things like ISO numbers, the week number, which is more popular in European countries to know week number than uh, most other places as far as I'm aware. And then local week numbers as well, which is here, cap, uh, lowercase i's, lowercase n as well for the week number. Sorry, that's the week year, week number. O for the ordinal day of the year. So what number is this in the year? <laughs> which again, almost never use. The quarter, which is quite an interesting one for like quarterly planning, things like that, you may use that one. Capital D, I've already mentioned. This is interesting here, so a little bit confusingly, like you get all these single letters for minutes, hours, and seconds. The capital D gives you a specific date format. The double D gives you this specific date format. And then three gives you this, and then four gives you this kind of full, uh, often gets called like the long, long form date, and this is more your, your short form. And then there's the, the other two in between. And then we get localized time. 
and time with seconds, time with seconds and abbreviated offset, full offset, capital T, localized 24 hour time. And then we get F lowercase for short localized date and time and capital F as well with the seconds. And then lastly, the X upcase and lowercase for the Unix timestamp with or without seconds. So a lot of different options here for the custom one. And you can see it, so if I do, just do that D, you can see straight away it gives us that, that date format as opposed to lowercase d, it'll only give me the day. So often, like the format that I'm most used to in New Zealand is, is this, but I need to do capital M for the month. If I do lowercase m here, it will give me the minute in that position, which obviously looks very odd. So we've got to have a capital M. So the case is important here. Uh, if I if I change this to be double D instead of thinking, okay, it's day, month, year, it's actually going to add the, the date here, the full date for the double D and then the month and then the year. So that's not what we want. We want something like that. And yeah, I do recommend that that format of year, month, day, that hierarchy is really important when you're thinking about the sort order for files, especially file names on, on Windows or uh, now for this one, we get a few different options. So we, we've got the standard one of including the input fields that we might have, but then we also get from date format. So depending on the format of the date coming in, we may have to dictate it and say, okay, it isn't this time string that it's expecting, date time string, it's in this particular format here. So it's, it's year, year, month, uh, month, day, day, so that we can tell it to expect it in that format so that then it can work out, well, which, which bit. Uh, corresponds to which part. And then we've also got the, the using the workflow time zone or not option. So at the moment it will just use the server time zone and this one is going to explicitly say use the workflow time zone, which might be different. Can't in this one specify explicitly a time zone. So that's format a date. Getting current date, we've already covered getting time between dates. So let's have current date here and the end date Okay, and so let's just copy that whole thing. Let's say end date 2027. Okay, and the units is days, and it's going to be called new date. So now it's going to calculate, okay, there's 730 days between the current date and this date that I've specified here in the future. And I can also add the week and the minute, and it's going to give me different values for all of those. And call it new date. And so I get to, as usual, include the output fields, uh, input fields. And then there's also output as an ISO string. If we just take out these ones, just do the day, we now get P730D. So that's actually what we, yeah, P2Y month, P24M. Okay, that's that one. Let's have a look at rounding a date. Let's put the date in, see what it does by default. So we've got rounding. So now this has rounded it to, because uh, we've got to nearest month at the moment. So it's taking us down to the first of the month. It's setting the time to all be zeros, but we could change it to the day. And so it's going to keep it as the 26th and then just set all the time down, or we might say to the nearest hour, it's going to keep the hour as 8 p.m., but round it out. In a minute and second, I was the same. For year, it should take us to the 1st of January, which it does and a zero for the time. So the round down is pretty straightforward and we've just got the standard include input fields. And then the last one is subtracting from a date. So we might have the date here. So even though, so that we have both options. So when I, I showed you the add to date earlier and you can do the minus, that's exactly the same as doing subtract from a date and not having a minus here. So we might say, take away four days from this and we'll get 22. So you can just explicitly do it. Other than that, it's exactly the same as add to a date minus minus four, it's going to give you the same result. So you could do the same with subtract from a date. If you have minus four, it'll actually add to it. You can do that. So it's a double negative.